today I want to share with you our classroom library system. and I am a second grade teacher in Oklahoma. This is my eighth year of teaching and all of my years have been in second grade. Today I want to share with you our classroom library system. It took me a little while to figure out how to organize our library to make it really kid friendly to where things could stay organized and it took me a little while to figure out what system was going to work best for me but I feel like really probably my third year is when it really started to become an easier thing to manage and I started trying the system I'm going to share with you today that really just made it quite simple and easy especially when I'm getting new books because that's happening all the time. So I'm just going to kind of show you my process and talk about how I acquired books and how I set up our classroom library so that hopefully it'll help you if you are looking to either revamp your existing library or start one for the first time. So first let's talk about how to gather books for your classroom library. I would say just once you know what you'll be teaching to try to buy packs of book books. I know for me, I wanted the Magic Treehouse set for second grade because some students are able to read those level of books. So I found those on eBay. I found a ton of books at garage sales and there's an app you can use on your phone to scan the books or you can search online to see if they're a good fit for your students. But that's also something you just kind of pick up as you know what your students need and you know what series are fitting for your students. But probably the biggest place I've gotten lots of books is from other teachers. I feel like there's always teachers that are either retiring or clearing through their books or they switch grade levels and they're just sorting through their books and getting rid of them. I've even been doing that and I've only taught eight years, but every summer it seems when we come back to school, Teachers are always laying things outside their door that they're no longer going to be using or they're getting rid of. And that was always an amazing way for me to grab more books for my classroom. I would go sift through and grab books that I didn't have that I thought would be great for my classroom. So that is hopefully something that will happen to you if you are really in need of books. Of course, asking for books is also another great way to get them. Whenever I did a senior graduating party from college, I asked each of the guests that we had invited instead of a gift card or a card to just bring a book from my wish list. And I sent them an Amazon wish list full of different books that I was interested in gathering for my classroom. So that was kind of special to get books from people that are a part of my life that could go into the classroom and be loved for years and years. And if your school does a book fair, that has also been a huge blessing. It's depended on the year for me, but I know my first year, I think the families were just really wanting to help build our library. So I had so many books donated to the classroom from families that were shopping at the book fair and our book fairs always had a little section of like teacher wish list items and that was always super great to see that students would be willing and students and their families would be willing to donate books to add to our classroom. So now I'm just going to take you into our classroom library and explain how I organize it and how I have students check out books whenever they're in the classroom. So here is the classroom library area. We have a little nook for reading over there, the picnic table. And then we've got the tent back over here as some options to read, although they really read all over the room, to be honest. But this is kind of the designated library spot. So all of the books are in this big bookshelf and over here. And then these are student book bins where they can keep books they want to continue reading. That way they don't get lost in their desk and it helps them stay a little more organized, although it's not the absolute most organized, but it's just one way we can store our books. They're allowed to keep two at a time, plus their books from the school library. If they don't take those home, most of them take those home to read. 
at night. These book bins were originally from Dollar Tree. I don't believe they sell this color anymore. Light lately, they've been doing more pastel light colors. So when I got more students, because this was back when I was having around 18 a year at my private school. So when we started getting more students, I went with these white bins, but they do take up quite a bit more space for the shelf. I have my books organized by topic because I really wanted students to be able to pick a topic that interested them and to be able to find a book on that topic so that they were engaged in their reading rather than just finding a book by its level. I did put levels on the outside of most of the books so that they could see if it's close to the level that they are at. So like if they are reading a level C book and they see they want to read this level O book, we would probably talk about how they could look at that book, but alphabetically those are pretty far apart. So this is probably going to be a really challenging book that they could read with their families, but it would be hard for them to comprehend if reading independently at that level. So it's not that they cannot look at a book that's not close to their level, but I just know that they're really gonna be able to practice more reading if the book level is somewhat close to their actual reading level. Now the topics that you choose for your book bins, if you wanna do something similar, will probably vary by grade, but we have a history bin, some chapter book bins, some themed book bins like Magic Tree House. We've got nonfiction animal books and animal fiction books. And then we also have a science nonfiction and a history section over here. And then I use a ton of books from this bin, the growth mindset bin. And we have other books that I use for morning meeting over here that I call character lesson books. So that's kind of the setup I have. I don't feel like there's any right way to necessarily group your books, but I wanted to do 20 bins. I got my bins mostly from the dollar store and I think a few from Walmart perhaps. These white ones that are for students, their individual bins were from Walmart. I just was kind of sorting them on the ground in big piles trying to decide what... We wanted all the themes to be and then this is kind of what we came up with after I was kind of grouping them myself and wanting them to understand the difference between fiction and nonfiction. So that was a part of my setup. These library tags I printed and laminated on PowerPoint. They are simple and easy and I love that I can just stick them on there with some sticky tack and they have been there for years and they held up well. After I decided what books were going to be in each bin, I got the bins, put the books in the bin, and then I had students actually help me label the inside of each book. So inside the book, it should have the number of the bin that it belongs to. So this bin, number five, is my favorite books or some of my favorites. And so whenever we put the book in that bin, we gave it the label five, and it also has my little stamp inside it. I will put the link for these stamps below. I just got a new one because I wanted something a little bit bigger than this. My first one was from Zazzle, I believe, and it is cute, but I just wanted something a little bit larger. So most of the books have this stamp on them because that's when I got the stamp I labeled all the books in each bin but now I have this beautiful stamp so any new books that I get I've been using this one I believe this was from Etsy so I will put the link if you're interested in getting a similar design but I love having that so that they always know it comes back to me and then the number is really simple for when my library helpers which is a classroom job that we have put away our books so I love using classroom jobs, which could definitely be another video I might need to chat about. But one of the jobs is library helper. So here's how that works. The students pick their books during reading time. And if they want to continue reading them, they're not done, they save them in their book bin. But if they are done with them, we have them put them in this book return. And at the end of the day, the library helpers 
come and they take this bin and put it usually here on the picnic table and they just go through each book. They open up the book, look at the number, and they sort the books back into the bins so that it's quick and easy when students are reading. They don't have to put the books back away by bin. They can just put them in the book return and the library helpers can ensure that everything gets put back neatly and nicely and are really making sure things are organized. So hopefully we'll do a little test. Sometimes things go back in the wrong bin and I'm like, oh, that's not right. But most of the time they're pretty good. Or the library helpers will tell me if the book does not have a bin. So yay, this book is labeled correctly. It goes back in bin number eight, ready for the next reader. This library system has been so simple for me to keep up with. It's really low prep for me or low upkeep because my student helpers are the ones putting the books away. They're always put away in the right bin. And anytime I get a new book, I just look up what book level I think it should be. I typically do that by searching on Scholastic's website. Let's see, I believe. We'll just find out together. Plastic Book Wizard. You can type in the book's name and it will tell you, yes, a level for that book. Well, I just looked at Miss Nelson is Missing. I love that book. It's, just, it's a favorite of mine. Okay, it pulled it right up and it knew that this was guided reading level L. So I could put level L on that book. That is typically all I have to do. I just look up the level of that book and then I stamp it with our class family library stamp. Definitely had a student or two try to turn our books into the actual school library thinking that they belonged there and the librarian was able to get them back to me quickly because she saw our stamp was on there. My first two years of teaching before I started using this system, I had students write down on paper. <laughs> they had to manually check out. They would write the title of the book who was checking it out and the date they checked it out and then there was a check-in spot so when they checked it in they had to go fill that out oh my word i cannot believe we did that there was so much time spent writing down the book they were checking out and i'm just like take it and go like go read it so i wouldn't recommend that so if you're wanting to log it i would definitely recommend doing the scanner system i'm so glad i finally started doing books in this bin system this has worked really really well for me and is something that i never really have to think about because it's just running itself and every time i get a new book it's very easy to stamp it check it and then pick which bin i think it's best fit in i just write that in the corner boom it's part of our classroom library i hope you enjoyed hearing about our classroom library and that the tips that i shared are helpful for you if you're trying to set one up or make improvements to your existing library. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for being here.